This is A7 English Podcast, and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries Novel. Chapter 131 Mountain God The Andy straightened her body after catching her breath. The rose bushes on both sides of her body swayed again and tried to create an atmosphere around her. However, the Andy waved her hand. All right, children. These are my compatriots. They have no ill intentions. Let me talk to them. The flower branches suddenly stopped moving. A few of the flowers that were not affected by the dragon flames suddenly stood up, as if saying, no ill intentions. What nonsense are you talking about? Do you see the dry ground and countless burned branches? Weihu was confused. The flame wings on his back disappeared, but the lightning around his body did not vanish. He asked, You call these flowers, children? The auntie consoled the plants and told Weihua, Yes, they're still children. I just planted them a few days ago. I have feelings for them. Don't hurt them. They won't hurt you either. The rose branches would not hurt Weihua and the others anymore, as they dodged in panic whenever Weihua moved. Xiao Bin and the others ran in and helped them be up. She said apologetically, I'm fine. It's all my fault. I plucked the flowers. Weihua glanced at her and asked the auntie, If I'm not mistaken, there seem to be bones of many animals buried in this land. These roses are so bright because they grew up consuming blood, right? Mo Guyan's heart skipped a beat. She thought about what would have happened to her if Weihua had not saved her. At that moment, the way everyone looked at the auntie changed. Could she be a secret expert? The auntie said, You guys... Humans are still eating chickens, pigs, and sheep. Are you not allowed to eat plants and animals? If the children were not protecting us, we would have been eaten up by the beasts. You guys? Everyone was confused by the term. Forget it. Come in with me. You'll know what's going on after you see it. There are six of you, right? We're having flower pastries. Come and try it. As the lady was talking, the rhinoceros walked out of the jungle behind them. Purple Meow, the gold eater, and the tree followed the rhinoceros. The auntie was speechless. The rose bushes made way so Wei was traveling caravan could follow the auntie. The auntie's surname was Li. She was a planter who worked in the rose garden. When time had suddenly stopped, and the other workers in the rose garden had been protected by the golden light. However, there were no roses. Five hundred years later, Humans were still humans, but the roses were no longer roses. Auntie, are we back on Earth? Is this the dinosaur era? Xiao Bin could not help but think that he had transmigrated to another world. Auntie Lee glanced at him. How can this be fake? I saw a triceratops barge into the rose garden yesterday. Wei Hu asked. This rose garden? Auntie Lee said. These are dinosaur era roses. Wei Hu asked. Are there cavemen? Dinosaur are cavemen. Weihua pointed at the rhinoceros, the purple cat, and the giant squirrel that ate iron ores. Dinosaur are rhinoceros. Dinosaur are cat. Dinosaur are squirrel. Everyone was speechless. Xiaobin said weakly. Experts say that mammals appeared after dinosaurs died. Humans appeared later. As the rose branches on either side of her supported her. Auntie Lee said confidently. Can experts be trusted? Do you know what's real? Soon, everyone followed Auntie Lee out of the rose garden. They saw a manor and over ten children running around. A female teacher in her twenties shouted, Don't run around! Listen to my orders. Grab the hose. We'll learn how to plant flowers and trees. Auntie Lee explained. These children came to our rose garden to play. The teacher brought them here to play, but they transmigrated to the dinosaur era with us. I asked the teacher to plant flowers and trees for them so they could survive in the rose garden. Weihua was confused. How do you communicate with the roses? How do they understand what you are talking about? When Andy Lee heard that, she smiled faintly, but her eyes could not hide the smugness in them. This started thanks to my years of experience planting trees. When I first arrived here, we were also afraid. However, the rose seedlings and the hoe in my hands transmigrated with me. Because of the plant seedlings and the hoe, the mountain god summoned me, hoping that I could help him grow all sorts of plants. 
After I ate the fruit he gave me, the roses could understand my words. Everyone was astonished. They were shocked by this. However, they could not understand why there was a tree man behind them. The tree man stopped in his tracks and told Wei Hua, I'm not going in. I'll rest here. Call me if you need anything. No one understood what the giant tree was talking about apart from Wei Hua. He glanced at the giant tree and thought about it for a moment before saying, That's fine. The animals should stay too. Wei Sha, take good care of them. The tree man stopped. He dug a huge hole and buried the lower part of his body. When he closed his eyes again, it was as if he had turned into a real tree. The animals and savages in the team stopped and rested by the tree. The gold eater jumped onto a tree branch and stared at Wei Hua and the others while chewing on metal. Big Sisterly, you're back. You brought someone back? The teacher greeted Big Sisterly respectfully at first, but she was surprised when she saw Wei Hua and the others behind Big Sisterly. Big Sisterly waved her hand. I brought some guests back. Prepare the food, Wei Hua said. I don't think there's any meat here. I brought some meat myself. Let's eat it together. Upon hearing about the meat, the adults and the children in the rose garden swallowed their saliva. Wei Hua glanced at Mo Guyan. Dr. Mo, you should know how to cook. Go help them. We can't eat with them without contributing. Mo Guyan's eyes widened. I was injured, and my clothes were torn. I only heard they put on a coat I found in Lu Ying's village. Now you're asking me to cook? Auntie Lee said. Young lady, you were injured earlier, right? Why would you cook? I'll take you to give you some medicine. Wei Hua glanced at Xiao Bin. Xiao Bin immediately understood. He jumped forward and said, I know how to cook. I'll help. We have a lot of meat here, but we have no cooks. Great, we don't have to eat roasted meat anymore. The moment he mentioned meat, the children swallowed their saliva. They had not eaten meat in ten days and they had been eating flower petals and fruit every day. If it were not for the flower in the manor, they probably would not have been able to eat flower pastries. Wei Hua looked at Xiao Bin in approval and told Auntie Li, I want to meet the mountain god you mentioned. Is that possible? This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 132 You Can Only Walk the Rest of the Journey Yourself Auntie Li agreed immediately. I'll take you there after dinner. Auntie Li led M. Mogiyun into the manor. The manor was not big, as there were only two floors. The second floor seemed like a place where one could stay the night. The first floor was a place used to make and sell fresh flower pastries. That part of the manor had collapsed. Perhaps it was because there had been no one around during the time halt. Fortunately, there were people working in the warehouse and the noodle room, so both places and everything inside them had been preserved. Other than that, there were no other traces of human buildings. The buildings were surrounded by soil, and a small road was accessible by the door. There were also some scattered weeds. It seemed like the nearby weeds had been cleared. Not far away was a newly plowed field. Two women from the countryside were working there. There were two young female pastry cooks in the courtyard. They took out the remaining noodles and made flour pastries. Then, they placed them in a huge pot to roast them. Under the pot were piles of stones. Soon, smoke curled up and connected with the clouds halfway up the mountain. On one side of the manor was a small stream. The teacher led her students to the stream. Little friends, let's wash our hands and prepare to eat. We have to wash our hands, or we will get sick. After washing her hands, the teacher led her students to the courtyard, where they sat down. She then said, We're eating pomegranates. One each. We can't choose. Wei Hua and the others were confused. Was one pomegranate each enough? They then saw one of the so-called pomegranates. One pomegranate was supposed to be as big as an apple. However, this pomegranate was about the height of a human. Its skin had been peeled open, revealing round after round of pomegranate seeds. Each one was as big as an apple. The children's expressions changed when they saw the pomegranate. A little fatty in black suddenly stood up. I don't want to eat pomegranates. I want to eat meat. The teacher quickly walked over to comfort him. Little friend, you can't be picky. 
Otherwise, you will be malnourished. A little lowly walked in front of Lurin with a piece of pomegranate fruit in her hands. Brother, have some pomegranate. Lurin was pleasantly surprised. Thank you, little sister. He took the fruit and took a bite happily. Lurin shivered and scrunched his nose. It's too freaking sour! Ha 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 ha! The children started laughing, and so did the little lowly. Weihua was a little surprised. He picked a fruit and ate it. The fruit was indeed sour, but there was a special energy in it. The energy flowed through his body, and all his cells became active. That's right, it's good stuff. Do you have any pomegranate seeds? I'll trade something of the same value with you guys, Weihua said. Lu Ren's mouth was filled with sourness. He did not feel any sweetness at all. He scrunched his nose and said, Big brother Wei, it's such a sour thing. Before he could finish his sentence, a pastry cook put on a smile and said, Little handsome guy, you are not aware of the effects of this fruit. You won't feel tired throughout the day even if you eat one in the morning. You will recover after sleeping for five to six hours. Lu Ren was confused. Why would you be sleeping for so long anyway? The two adults blushed. What else could we do if we don't sleep? Lu Rin and Long Tao's faces turned red. The two pure-hearted virgins instantly thought of many indescribable things. Plus, they realized that there seemed to be no adult men in the Rose Manor. Wei Hua smiled. Young people were simple-minded. Come on, let's eat the fresh flower pastries. The two female pastry cooks placed the pastries on the table. The children could not wait any longer. The teacher immediately shouted. Children, don't make a fuss. Eat properly. I want to eat neat. The little fatty was unhappy again. Lu Ren and Long Tao had just sat down when the two female pastry cooks sat on either side of them. Their faces were red, and they looked very enthusiastic. At that moment, Xiao Bin and two aunties brought out a huge pot. The meat is here. We can eat it after cooking it for five to six more hours. Wei Hua glanced at Xiao Bin. Xiao Bin shook his head to show that there was no problem. Auntie Li walked out with Emogian. She had changed out of her muddy clothes and put on a new set of clothes. She looked pretty now, and Auntie Li said loudly, Let's eat! Everyone started eating. Wei Hua had a biscuit. The smell was novel to him, especially the rose flowers and the biscuits. Wei Hua felt the qi in his body moving faster. Wei Hua only felt his qi and blood speed increase. However, the faces of Xiao Bin and Mo Giyun and the young women in the rose garden turned red. They were panting, their bodies were hot, and their foreheads were sweating. Something was not right. Wei Hua thought about it and said, I'm done eating. Tell me where the mountain god is. I'll go see him. I have a lot of questions to ask him. Auntie Lee's breathing accelerated as she said, How can a man eat so little? How can one work unless they are full? The women blushed and lowered their heads. Wei Hua lifted his head slightly and looked around with his cold eyes. Everyone present felt a chill go down their spines. The burning feeling was instantly suppressed, and everyone broke out in cold sweat. Auntie Lee's body trembled as well. She recalled that Wei Hua had mentioned the mountain god. Xiao Bin was indeed an expert at reading people's expressions. He stood up immediately and said, Big Brother Wei is a qi training expert. He can already avoid grains, so he doesn't eat much. The rest of us can eat. Wei Hua's cold eyes gradually regained their warmth. He subconsciously treated everyone present as a junior. How dare a junior speak to an elder like that? Did they have a death wish? After all, he had lived for over 300 years. His ideology and mindset had changed dramatically, and he subconsciously treated others as his juniors. Auntie Lee returned to normal. She stood up and said respectfully, I will take you to the mountain god. It seems like he wants to see you. Wei Hua nodded and left with Auntie Lee. The entire place fell silent for a moment. It was Xiao Bin who eventually said, Let's continue eating. This fruit is delicious. It's so sour. The atmosphere returned to normal, and everyone started eating happily. However, Xiao Bin and Mo Giyun did not dare touch the flower pastries anymore. 
Wei Hua followed Auntie Li out of the Rose Manor and walked along a beaten path that led to a green mountain. After a few steps, Auntie Li said, The mountain god is at the end of this road. No one dares to enter this place without his summons. I can't enter. You have to walk the rest of the way yourself. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 133 Your Friends Have Left the Caravan Wei Hua glanced at Auntie Li and realized that she was bowing respectfully at the end of the road before leaving. Wei Hua continued walking forward. When he reached the end, he first saw nine pillars. The pillar in the middle was the tallest. The other pillars were scattered around that pillar, forming a clock-like structure. Wei Hua then saw a gigantic white stone golem. The stone golem was about 70 to 80 meters tall, and half of its body was embedded in the mountain. Green moss covered half of it. Wei Hua saw the stone golem looking up at the sky without moving. If it was not for the system notification, he would have thought it was a huge statue. Wei Hua discovered the golem's identity thanks to a system notification. Mountain giant, epic, genderless, 398 years old. The sun should have reached its highest position 200 years ago. However, it has only just risen. Are we almost there? Or is this too slow? The mountain giant mumbled. It was speaking the mountain language. Wave was lips curled up slightly. Are you saying the day has not grown? It's because our reflexes and movements have accelerated. Is that why you think the day has been extended? Everything around him was still, as though he had reached the speed of light. The mountain giant lowered its head and curled its lips slightly. It's very interesting. I really didn't know what the statues protected by the golden light were at first. I didn't expect them to come alive and call themselves humans a few days ago. I'm really curious about you guys. Why are you so special? Wei Hua stroked his chin. Is that why you're protecting them? Are you observing humans and trying to understand them? If you are, what will you do? The giant said. I don't know if I'll do anything. Yes. As long as this doesn't threaten my safety, I'll be a pacifist. I believe that all living creatures in the world are equal. Humans, plants, and golems are all equal. I hope to get along well with all of them. Wei Hua nodded. Since such an epic-ranked creature was living there, and there was the natural barrier of the rose bushes, this place was indeed a paradise. The mountain giant lifted its head and looked at the sky. A hundred years ago, a group of humans riding Pegasi appeared. All of them were at the epic stage. They moved mountains and filled the seas, transformed mountains and rivers, and captured epic-ranked creatures. More than a century ago, there was an extremely irritable magic Tyrannosaurus nearby. However, it was captured. Otherwise, I would not have become an epic creature. Wave would knew who the magic Tyrannosaurus was. One could not be too arrogant regardless of whether one was a human or a beast. Wei Hua had been talking to the mountain giant for a long time. They were about the same age and they could talk about things. The mountain giant had its own views and thoughts on many things. Although these thoughts and views were not mature, they gave Wei Hua new inspiration. During the conversation, Wei Hua thought to himself, I've never thought about these questions. I only answered them with the knowledge I acquired back then. For example, the mountain giant had its own opinion on time. There are eight hours of daylight and eight hours of night. Look at the pillars I erected on the ground in front of me. I named them sundial and I used them to record the time. Look, the shadow has reached the longest pillar. That means one hour has passed. Wei Hua knew that the so-called sundial and the hours were all named like this by the translation device. This could not be accurate but it was enough to show what the mountain giant wanted to express. Wei Hua did not consider it or make up anything. He only said, Based on human time, we have 48 hours a day, 60 minutes an hour, and 60 seconds a minute. The mountain giant was curious. How long is one second? Wei Hua blinked and snapped his fingers. He then took two steps. The mountain giant nodded. I understand. You humans live so fast because you have short lifespans, right? Wei Hua thought about it and said, No, we are in a hurry. The mountain giant nodded. Time hasn't increased or decreased. It's just that different creatures walk fast or slow. 
I think it takes four hours to think of a problem. Sometimes, I spend an entire day observing the sun. I think the sun is a mythical creature. It loves the earth like a mother. Perhaps the earth is its child. It had probably been a long time since the mountain giant had gotten a chance to communicate with someone. It had spoken a lot to Weihua, told him many things, and it kept telling its own stories. Most importantly, it spoke very slowly, just like a locally produced television series. It stopped speaking after Weihua said a few words. Weihua returned after talking to the mountain giant for seven to eight hours. The sun was right in the middle of the sky. The mountain giant had said that it needed to look at the sun and think about stones. However, before Weihua had left, it had said, Everything has its own path. We can't interfere. Everything has its final destination. We can't stop it. Weihua did not understand why the mountain giant had said that. It was probably because it had witnessed too many deaths. Weihua had as well. He had also witnessed the destruction of many things. Perhaps one day, he would witness his own destruction. As the mountain giant had said, everything would come to an end. When Weihua returned to the Rose Manor, Xiao Bin and the others were having their second meal. Weihua walked to the door and said, We should go! Xiao Bin stood up immediately. And Mo Guyun hesitated for a moment before standing up as well. However, Lu Rin, Long Tao, and Lu Ying did not move. Weihua frowned slightly. The atmosphere suddenly changed. Everyone looked at Weihua in fear, especially Lu Rin and Long Tao. And Mo Guyun walked over and said, Little sister Lu Ying's health is not doing well. She's not fit to travel with us. Auntie Li has been talking to me for a long time. Why don't we let her stay here? Wei Hu nodded. I will not force anyone. You can stay if you want to. Wei Hu looked at Xiao Bin. Are you staying? Xiao Bin shook his head firmly. No, I want to come with you. Wei Hu looked at Lu Rin and Long Tao. The two of them stood up, looking like they had no idea what to do. They dared not lift their heads under Wei Hu's gaze, but they still said timidly, We are sorry, big brother Wei. It's too dangerous for us to travel outside. Given our strength, we'll just be a burden to you. We'll follow you next time. System notice. Lu Ren and Long Tao have left your traveling caravan. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 134 Silver As soon as Lu Ren and Long Tao finished their sentence, Xiao Bin's eyes widened. Lu Ren, Long Tao, are the two of you, going to give up like this? We still have a more glorious future. If we stop here. Lu Ren suddenly interrupted Xiao Bin. Brother Bin! We're not you. We don't have any talent or perseverance. We're just ordinary people. That's right, we were all fantasizing about being able to become superhumans and strong people like you, Big Brother Wei. However, most people have to face the truth. Although the outside world is exciting, it also comes with danger. Even though the Rose Manor is not big, it's safe and stable. We've thought about it. That's the right way for us. Xiao Bin stared blankly at Lu Ren and Long Tao, feeling speechless. His face was filled with disbelief. Why? Why did you guys grow up to be like this? Wei Hua looked at Mo Guyun. Are you staying? Mo Guyun, who was stunned, shook her head repeatedly. No. I want to leave. The atmosphere in the Rose Garden was a little weird. She did not want to stay. Wei Hua nodded. He suddenly thought of the giant's words. He then said, Everyone has their own path to walk. Everyone has to be responsible for their own choices. Let's split up here. Xiao Bin, say goodbye to your friends. Yes, Auntie Li, I need pomegranate seeds and rose seeds. I'll trade beast fur and meat for them. Wei Hui used the meat and fur of beasts in exchange for some pomegranate seeds and rose seeds. He threw them both into the display platform. With these things, it would be easier to store some resources. Xiao Bin hugged his friends. I will miss you guys. I will come back when I become as strong as Big Brother Wei. Wei Hua, who had already obtained what he wanted, left with the two of them. The other people in the Rose Manor came to the door and bade them farewell. Before leaving, 
Wei Hua plucked a huge pomegranate. It was a rare treasure. After one consumed it, it could increase one's qi cultivation efficiency. The tree man pulled himself out of the ground. Without the three of them, the traveling caravan continued its journey. Big Brother Wei spent two to three years training. My talent is not strong, but it should be enough if I spend six to seven years training, right? Xiao Bin mumbled. The giant tree asked. What did he say? Wei was said in Mandarin. He said he wants to become an epic being within six to seven years. The giant tree was shocked. Why is he so arrogant? What gives him the confidence? Xiao Bin saw the exaggerated expression on the giant tree's face and asked. Big Brother Wei, what did the senior tree say? Wei Hua glanced at him. He said he thinks highly of you. Xiao Bin nodded. I will work harder to live up to Big Brother Wei and the senior tree's expectations. Wei Hua was speechless. No, no, we have no hopes for you. The group continued traveling. After about two days, the 100-meter-tall tree man suddenly said, I saw a human camp not far ahead. I'll wait for you guys here. Wei Hua had communicated with the tree man previously and told him what a caravan was. The tree man knew that Wei Hua would stop to trade with the people in the caravan. Wei Hua asked, What kind of camp is it? Was it a player camp or a human camp? If it was the former, he would have to earn some magical stones. The tree man said, There are a lot of people. The buildings are very orderly. People are talking and laughing. They are farming. A few people are building a bonfire. It was already evening, and the sun was about to set. Wei Hua said, The squirrel and the purple cat will stay. The others will follow me to the camp to trade. The purple cat stretched lazily and yawned. It then sprawled on the ground and rested. The gold eater drilled its way out of the tree's branches. It was chewing on a piece of metal with its teeth as it watched Wei Hua lead the way to the human camp. They walked for two hours. Xiao Bin was speechless. That was not far. Wei Hua's appearance alarmed the people in the camp. They all ran out and looked at the rhinoceros, Wei Sha, and Xiao Bin in shock. It seemed like they were ignoring Wei Hua. Suddenly, a 19-year-old young man squeezed his way out of the crowd and shouted at Wei Hua in shock. Your! Lu Hua! Lu Hua, is that you? It's been a long time. The person walked toward Wei Hua and tried to shake his hand. Wei Hua was confused. Who are you? Who is Lu Hua? He extended a hand. Hello, hello? The man patted Wei Hua's shoulder. I didn't expect you to come to this world. It must be fate. Who the hell are you? At that moment, someone suddenly shouted. Make way, big brother Lu Siwu is here. The young man frowned and told Wei Hua and the others. Be careful, this person has a bad temper. He's currently the one who gives orders in our camp. The crowd dispersed and Lu Siwu walked over. Wei Hua looked over. Isn't this an artificial being? Lu Siwu took a few steps and approached Wei Hua. He then said respectfully, Hello, traveling merchant. I'm the person in charge of this camp. If you want to trade, you can trade with me. Xiao Bin was confused. Mo Guyun was confused. Who had said that he had a bad temper? However, Wei Hua immediately understood why the artificial being was so polite. Wei Hua was currently at level 32 and was ahead of others ranking-wise. He had surpassed level 2 and 3 because level 30 missions were used to complete a rare-ranked quest. This quest was too difficult, and all the players were stuck except for Wei Hua. Lu Siwu was only at level 30, while Wei Hua was at level 32. That was why Lu Siwu respected Wei Hua. Wei Hua said, I have a few savage captives. Do you need them? Lu Siwu took a closer look at the savages behind the rhinoceros and said, If the savages are tamed, they will be a good labor force. Your savages. Yes, in terms of taming speed, they are worth at least 1,600 units of silver. However, our camp does not have that much silver currently. You can check the inventory of our camp and find the resources you want to trade them for. Soon, a virtual screen appeared in front of Wei Hua's eyes. No one else could see it except for Wei Hua and Lu Siwu. Wei Hua checked it and realized that there were quite a lot of resources in it. 
There were beer, medicine, herbs, plastic, spare parts, steel, iron ores, and coal mines. They were all precious materials. They were not cheap in the magical stone mall, but they were cheap on the trading menu. I want iron, steel, and medicine. Lu Siwu was very respectful and spoke in a friendly tone. He scanned Wei Hua seriously and said, After deducting the value of the savages, you will have to pay 3,000 units of silver. Wei Hua called Xiao Bin over. You talk to him. Xiao Bin's social skills were at level 7, which was higher than Wei Hua's level. Upon seeing Xiao Bin, Lu Siwu's face sank. It seemed like he was unhappy about talking to Xiao Bin. He said coldly, After deducting the value of the savages, your caravan will need to pay 2,700 units of silver. Xiao Bin was confused. Why was it 300 units of silver less? This is a 7 English podcast, and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 135 The Light Embraced Wei Hu Again Wei Hu was surprised. It seemed like social skills were useful. Wei Hu did not have any silver on hand at all. However, he had other goods such as bronze and minerals. Bronze was extremely valuable. One kilogram of bronze was worth 300 units of silver. Wei Hu had thousands of kilograms of bronze. He used the bronze to make up for the difference in price and also exchanged the remaining 1,600 silver coins in the camp. After the transaction was completed, Lu Siwu laughed out loud. Come on, it's getting late. Let's stay here for the night, and we'll be having a bonfire meeting soon. However, all the goods in the camp have to be collected. One, two. Before he could finish his sentence, a middle-aged man emerged from the crowd. His eyes widened. Xiao Yun, is that you? Xiao Yun. And Mo Guyin looked at the middle-aged man in shock. A moment later, her eyes became moist. Dad! The two of them hugged each other. The father touched his daughter's face. It's so good to see that you're all right. It's really good that you're all right. Xiaobin watched this scene and sighed. However, he was a little confused. Why had so many people transmigrated to this world? The sky gradually darkened. People lit bonfires and started dancing around them. This was a safe zone. No wild creatures could barge in. They could dance in the safe zone peacefully, drink, and eat meat. Wei Hua sat in front of a wooden table. He ordered a bottle of beer and savored the aftertaste. Why should humans drink alcohol? Wine was only a memory in his mind. At that moment, Xiao Bin walked over and sat beside Wei Hua. He did not dare stop Wei Hua from watching the grand bonfire party. Xiao Bin felt a little sad. Sister Amo might be leaving our caravan soon. Our group is getting smaller and smaller. Wei Hua smiled. Everyone is alone. From school to graduation, from work to retirement, from life to death, you have to walk your own path. Xiao Bin lifted his head, his eyes flickering. Is this the awareness and loneliness of the strong? I understand. Wei Hua was speechless. What do you understand? As the two of them were drinking, Wei Hua savored each mouthful of his drink carefully. He drank slowly, but Xiao Bin did not dare drink too quickly. He had lived too cautiously throughout his whole life. At that moment, Emo Guyun led her father to their table. Emo Guyun's father held the back of his head and bowed before Wei Hua. Mr. Wei, I'm really grateful to you for bringing my daughter back to me. You must not know this, but she's had no mother since a young age. I'm the only one she has. Wei Hua ignored him. Halfway through his sentence, Father Amo took out a marble stone. Wei Hua's attention was attracted by the stone. Father Amo said softly, I excavated this not long ago. At the time, my pickaxe shattered. I thought that this was a treasure that I could not give to Lu Siwu. Because you saved my daughter, I decided to give this to you as a way to repay you. Xiao Bin frowned. It was just a small stone, yet it was meant to repay his kindness. Wasn't the man too naive? Wei Hua took the stone and said, All right, we're done. We have nothing to do with each other anymore. Xiao Bin was confused. Brother Wei was a considerate person. Wei Hua grabbed the stone tightly in his hand. He saw the real nature of the stone on the system interface. 
gold resonance, or from outer space with all sorts of unbelievable characteristics. Mining method, unknown. Although Wei Hu's expression was calm, he was shocked. That stone was actually a gold ore. This piece of gold was something good, something that could not be described. Wei Hu tried to inject energy into the stone, but it seemed like a bottomless pit. No matter how much energy energy Wei Hu injected, it could not be filled. Wei Hu took out some bronze and grabbed both items as if he was pinching a walnut. However, the bronze shattered into pieces. Before I could exert any strength, the bronze shattered. Good stuff. After Wei Hu took the gold ore, a system notification popped up. And Mo Guyun left your traveling caravan. Wei Hu lifted his head and asked, Are you planning to stay in this camp? And Mo Guyun was stunned. She did not know what to say, but her father continued the conversation. Xiaoyun is just a weak woman. Now that the outside world is in chaos and it's so dangerous, we have discussed this option. Let her stay. Wei Hu nodded. You should stay. Everyone had their own path and made their own choices. They had to pay the price for their choices. Father Emo told Emo Gion, Stay and say goodbye to Mr. Wei and the others. This is a party. You can even invite them to dance. It's a beautiful night. Don't waste it. Emo Gion sat on the other side with a red face. She did not dare stop Wei Hu from looking at the bonfire, but she brought him a bottle of beer. Big Brother Wei, I respect you. Thank you for saving my life. Wei Hu only took a sip, while Emo Guyun took a huge gulp. Soon, her face turned red. After a while, she lay down on the wooden table, looking really drunk. Wei Hu glanced at Xiao Bin. Take Emo Guyun back so she can rest. Xiao Bin was a little surprised. He pointed at himself. Me? Wei Hu nodded. Let me watch the bonfire and the night sky in peace. Xiao Bin nodded and left with Emo Guyun. Wei Hu was drinking alone while watching the people dancing at the bonfire party. A few hours later, the bonfire went out and the people dancing went back to sleep. Wei Hu remained where he was. There were only two-thirds of his beer bottle left. He watched silently and drank until the last person left the square. The flames were extinguished, and the world turned silent and dark. Wei Hua lifted his head and looked at the starry sky. The starlight scattered and shone down on Wei Hua's body. Wei Hua narrowed his eyes and stared at the night sky. He suddenly felt that everything around him had disappeared. The whole world was shrouded by darkness, and only a faint light could be seen. It was a ray of light. This ray was Wei Hua's spirit source. It was Wei Hua's soul crystal. It was a star. The only star shining in that vast sea of darkness. It felt both like an instant and an eternity. Wei Hu suddenly felt a gaze on him. He opened his eyes and saw a person leaving the room. The other person saw Wei Hu and felt shocked. He asked, You haven't rested yet? Have you been sitting here alone for seven to eight hours? Wei Hu did not speak. He just sat in the darkness like a statue. Am I asleep? The man covered his crotch. I can't take it anymore. I drank too much last night. I can't hold it in anymore. He rushed into the bathroom. Soon, people started waking up one after another. They greeted each other and lit the torches of the camp. The light hugged Wei Hua again. Wei Hua looked into the starry sky and felt unprecedented loneliness. This is a seven English podcast and you're listening to five Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 136 Have you eaten? There were still a few hours left before dawn, but people had already woken up. They started their daily work, which included construction, logging, farming, planting, and fetching water. Lu Siwu woke up early. He was giving everyone working instructions. He was not tired, but he was very strict. I'll leave after teaching you how to survive. You have to treasure this time. Before I leave, it's best if you find a leader and let him lead you forward. In this world, if you don't move forward you will die. You have to remember this. Although everyone was a little unhappy, they did not complain. Lu Siwu had once displayed his powerful strength and intimidated everyone. No one dared to complain. On top of that, 
Lu Siwa had said that he would be leaving soon, so everyone decided to wait a little longer. At that moment, Xiao Bin rushed out of a cabin. His clothes were a little messy, and he shivered as the wind blew. This wind is really cold. He turned around and glanced at the cabin again. However, he only stole a glance and then started searching for Wei Hua. Xiao Bin sighed. The girls in the Rose Manor and the camp seemed very enthusiastic. Unfortunately, for the sake of his future ambitions and path of immortality, he could only keep this body pure in case he encountered a heaven-defying cultivation technique that only virgins could cultivate. Xiao Bin shook his head and sneezed again. He saw Wei Hua sitting alone at the wooden table. There were still two-thirds of the beer left in Wei Hua's hand. At that moment, the crowd on the square was getting busier. Xiao Bin saw Wei Hua through the gap between two people. Xiao Bin's heart twitched as he looked at Wei Hua. An indescribable pain flooded his heart. It was loneliness. It felt as if Wei Hua's existence was the source of this loneliness. It seemed as if this loneliness would disappear if Wei Hua was not there. Xiao Bin suddenly felt that Wei Hua was no longer alone. He was a god. This was not the first time Xiao Bin had such a feeling. A few years ago, he had followed his parents to a museum and seen a totem with hundreds of years of history. When he had seen that totem, Xiao Bin had experienced the same feeling. At that moment, Wei Hua stood up. The lonely feeling immediately disappeared. Wei Hua walked over to Xiao Bin and asked, Are you staying? Xiao Bin shook his head. I want to follow you. I want to become a powerful being like you. Wei Hua looked at Xiao Bin and suddenly felt like he had become an old man who had led the main character to a fortuitous encounter. It was a wonderful feeling, but Wei Hua did not admit that he was an old man. He left the camp with Xiao Bin. The tree man was already waiting for them. Let's go. They stopped after walking for over 100 kilometers. They stopped because they had seen a C-shaped building. The building was completely covered in vines, and there were weeds all over the ground. There were also huge trees all around it, and many of them had collapsed on the ground. Xiao Bin looked at the C-shaped building, which was completely covered in vegetation, and said, This is a building from our world, isn't it? Did this transmigrate centuries ago? How did it end up like this? Xiao Bin walked over and tugged at the thick vines. He created a crack and saw what was inside. There were countless thick vines inside the vines. The vines intertwined with each other, but there was still a long passage. No steel or cement could be seen from the inside. After 500 years, the cement had rotted away, but the plants had not. Wei Hua recalled what had happened in the building. At first, without any humans and the protection of the golden light, the plants had occupied the building. They had filled every corner of it. Gradually, the cement in the building had begun to fall off and the ground had begun to cave in. Soon, the steel tendons had been exposed and had started rusting and breaking. However, before that could happen, the roots of the vines had coiled around every pillar of the building. As a result, even if everything in the building rotted, the building could still continue standing by using these mutated plants as support. It was no longer made of steel but of leaves and roots. Wei Hua and Xiao Bin did not enter because they were worried that the plant structure was not stable enough. However, just as they were about to leave, they heard Chinese coming from the building. Hello? A distant voice came from the depths of the plants and the building. It was accompanied by an echo. Wei Hua turned his head away while Xiao Bin got excited. There's someone inside! Hello? The voice was heard again, but it was a little weird. Xiao Bin felt his hands and feet turn cold. Hello? The voice kept coming out along with an echo. Saying such a word in such a place made the place seem even weirder. Xiao Bin asked, Did you hear that? Wei Hua nodded and said, Come with me. Xiao Bin was a little afraid. Could there be? Wei Hua said, Don't be afraid of anything. Even if it's a ghost, it will not harm you. If a ghost kills you, you will become a ghost too. Are you embarrassed about meeting it? Xiao Bin was speechless. He did not feel afraid after hearing Wei Hu's words. The two of them pulled apart the vines and walked in. The building was no different from any other building. The walls had turned into thin vines and leaves, and the pillars had turned into thick intertwined vines. 
It was a natural building. Yes, there was nothing wrong with it. Wei Hua and Xiao Bin continued walking. The sounds kept coming, and the leaves rustled in the wind. At that moment, the voice inside the building changed. Have you eaten? Wei Hua was confused. Xiao Bin was confused. Have you eaten? The voice was heard again. It sounded weird. Xiao Bin asked, Should I answer? Wei Hua said, Don't make a sound. Don't alert the things inside. The voice said, Come to my house to eat. Come to my house to eat. Come to my house to eat. Before, there had only been one voice. Now, a few voices were heard. The voices, which were endless, were getting louder and louder. There was a sudden movement inside the building as if something was approaching them. Xiao Bin's hair stood on end. He became nervous and broke out in cold sweat. His heart was in his mouth. Wei Hua said, Don't be nervous. I've seen ghosts before. They're not ghosts. Xiao Bin was confused. How can you be so powerful? Have you seen ghosts before? The voice inside changed again. No need, no need, no need. The asterisk MN. Xiao Bin cursed. He was extremely nervous. The sound was getting closer. That thing was coming. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 137 The Heavenly Pit Hello? A red bird's head popped around a corner in front of them. It glanced at Wei Hua and Xiao Bin, then turned around and stole a few glances at them before walking out. It was a two-meter tall bird. Because it was too tall, the space in the plant-filled building was not big. Its head was lowered. It took two steps forward and opened its mouth. Have you eaten? Xiao Bin said. Air. He was scared out of his wits. He had thought that this was some kind of supernatural creature, but it was a bird. The bird told them, Come to my place to eat. As soon as the bird finished its sentence, seven to eight birds came around the corner and started talking. Come to our place to eat. Come to our place to eat. Wei Hua said, They are parrots. Five hundred years ago, humans had been halted by time. The pet parrots had escaped from their cages and come to live here. However, they had not forgotten the human language. They had even passed down the language repeatedly. Strangely, the meaning had not changed. As soon as Wei Hua spoke, the parrots stared at him. They turned their heads, used their left eyes, and turned their heads again. They kept observing Wei Hua. One of the parrots suddenly said, Hello? Wei Hua walked over. Hello, hello? The group of parrots jumped aside and made way for Xiao Bin. Xiao Bin hurriedly followed them. A parrot suddenly asked him, Have you eaten? Xiao Bin said hurriedly, Yes, yes. The two of them continued walking. The group of parrots followed them. They curiously observed Wei Hua and his companion while following them. Wei Hua kept walking forward. Seven to eight minutes later, Wei Hua and Xiao Bin arrived at a cave entrance. Through the cave entrance, they saw a huge pit. The loud sound of a waterfall could be heard. There was a waterfall. The water from the waterfall rushed into the pit. The bottom of the pit was lush, and there was a dense forest. In the middle of the sky was an oval-shaped lake. A few water birds descended from the sky and extended their claws. When they flew up again, huge fish had appeared in their claws. It turned out that the ground on the other side of the C-shaped building had already descended and turned into a pit. It was blocked by the dense trees around the C-shaped building, so the few of them could not see it. Xiaobin took a deep breath and puffed his chest out. He narrowed his eyes and looked into the distance. How spectacular! They both looked into the distance and saw a broken plant-filled building. It was a building similar to the C-shaped building under their feet. It was also covered by plants. The interior of the building had disappeared, leaving only plants behind. Apart from the broken building, they also saw a circular green building. It seemed like a gymnasium. They then saw a huge bridge made of vines and leaves. The pit used to be a bustling steel city. Now, it had become a plant city. Wei Hua was confused. Where were the residents of this city? Xiaobin sighed. 
This is the state of the world after humans disappeared. It's so spectacular and beautiful. Before he could finish his sentence, Wavewood took two steps forward and jumped into the pit. Xiao Bin was shocked. Big Brother Wei! Wei Ho leaped down into the pit. He spat out a mouthful of dragon flames and rubbed his back. Then, a pair of flame wings appeared on his back. The flame wings did not need to be flapped. The strong thrust of the burning flames was enough to lift him up. Wei Hua landed in the pit and drew a standard parabola. He then flew up again. He brushed past the canopy of trees and chased after the birds. Finally, he flew over the huge lake and toward the river connected to the waterfall. In the end, he flew up the waterfall and into the sky. Wave was stopped after flying for a few hundred meters. He was like an eagle observing its prey, his sharp eyes trying to see through everything down in the pit. Xiao Bin's eyes widened when he saw the scene. F tur 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 tur. Is this the imposing field? Is this really a realm that can be reached in three to five years? Wei Hua had found nothing. He flew back and landed by Xiao Bin's side. The wings of fire disappeared, but Xiao Bin could still feel the lingering pain in the air. Wei Hua said, I've looked around. There's no one down there. Let's take a detour. There's no way down. Xiao Bin could only nod and suppress his shocked emotions. They followed the original route back, followed by the group of parrots. Have you eaten? Wei Hua turned around and said, Yes, we're leaving. They had thought that there was someone inside, but there had only been a group of parrots. Any traces of humans had disappeared. However, they had not expected the parrots to retain the human language. The parrots could not understand what he was talking about. When Wei Hua and Xiao Bin walked out of the C-shaped building, the parrots started singing one after another. Come to my place to eat. Come to my place to eat. Wei Hua did not turn around. He waved his hand with his back facing the parrots. No need! When the parrots behind him heard that, their song reached its climax. No need. No need. No need. The tree man asked curiously. What is this? Wei Hua smiled. A song. The tree man thought about it for a moment and asked. This is the sound of birds looking for a mate, isn't it? You call it a song? Yes. This is a song. Hello? Have you eaten? Come to my place to eat. No need. The giant tree started singing. It used the sound of leaves rustling in the wind. The whole song became sad in the process. As the breeze blew, rustling sounds could be heard throughout the forest. The leaves were playing music for the tree man. The tree man's voice was stuck amid the rustling sounds. He was speaking Mandarin, but he was not proficient. He sounded like a foreigner speaking Mandarin, but his voice was very special. Along with the sound of the leaves, the song emitted a special scent. Hello? Xiao Bin could not help but sing along. His eyes turned moist. He thought of his hometown, his parents, his neighbors, his ordinary life, and his normal conversations with his neighbors. I can't go back anymore, he said. The giant tree was stunned for a moment before picking up the song again. I can't go back. The entire forest was filled with the sounds the tree man made. Wei Hua and Xiao Bin listened quietly. Xiao Bin's face was already covered in tears. He kept wiping his tears with his sleeve and sniffing. He looked into the distance and sang loudly with the tree man. I can't go back anymore. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 138, Two Tigers The tree man kept singing along the way. However, after singing the song a few times, it suddenly felt a little uncomfortable. It asked, Are there any other songs? Even after spending so much time with him, Xiao Bin could barely understand the language of the tree man. He was stunned for a moment before he thought about it. In the end, he sang a song that fit the situation. I once crossed mountains and seas and passed through crowds of people. The giant tree was shocked. This song is even better. Although I don't understand it, I can picture the scene described by the lyrics. It's a picture of humans farming, right? Xiao Bin was confused. 
the tree man suddenly became interested in the song. He kept asking Xiao Bin about it, and Xiao Bin felt flattered. He had never had a conversation with the tree man, and he had not expected him to take the initiative to communicate with him. He was communicating by using songs. You're my little apple! After Xiao Bin finished singing, the tree man came to a realization. This is a cheerful song. It should be describing humans waking up early in the morning to wash their faces and brush their teeth. Xiaobin kept singing. I'm eating fried chicken on the square. The tree man was deep in thought. This song expresses the gratitude humans feel for food. Xiaobin was speechless. Whatever you say, old tree. The tree man understood some parts of the human language, but he still only understood half of it. After hearing a few sentences, he naturally interpreted the words differently. When Xiaobin finished singing, the tree man sighed. Humans are indeed a magical race. Xiaobin was confused. He thought that the tree man was praising humans for being able to sing and dance. He thus replied, I'm an amateur. I don't know how to dance. However, the tree man thought that Xiaobin was praising him for learning quickly. He therefore replied, You've taught me well. Xiaobin was confused. Wei Hu watched the two of them converse. They were getting further away from each other with each second. They were talking nonsense. However, the tree man suddenly stopped talking and started singing. Sha! 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 Hu La! Wei Hu was confused. What are you doing? Are you singing? Where's the translation system? Translate for me. Xiaobin asked Wei Hu softly. Big brother Wei, what is he singing? Wei Hu was speechless. The translation system was stumped. Soon, the tree man finished his song and asked. How was it? This is a song I created. Wei Hu started clapping. It's very nice. The meaning of the lyrics is profound, and the song is beautiful. If you were a human, you would definitely become the most outstanding singer. The tree man was confused. Really? Xiao Bin looked at Wei Hui in admiration. Big brother Wei, it seems like you're quite accomplished at writing lyrics. Why don't you sing a song too? Wei Hui was speechless. How did I become accomplished at writing lyrics? Wei Hui thought about it and then sang. Two tigers. Two tigers. Xiao Bin was speechless. The tree man was shocked. This is a cruel scene of two ferocious tigers running and fighting. Even their tails and ears have been bitten off. However, the two tigers have not stopped fighting. They've shown their determination to fight to their death. Wei Hu was speechless. Xiao Bin asked, What did the senior tree say? Wei Hu replied, He said that the song is good but unsuitable for children. Xiao Bin was confused. Why? Isn't this a children's song? The giant tree was still singing. It was very interested in new things such as songs, but it suddenly stopped. Xiao Bin seemed like he wanted to continue singing, but Wei Hua patted his shoulder. Something is coming. Be careful. Xiao Bin immediately shut his mouth and focused. At that moment, rustling sounds were heard from the woods around them. Animals were surrounding them in groups. Soon, a few monkeys half the height of the average human appeared on the branches of a few trees on one side. These monkeys were wearing animal skins, straw hats, hunting bows, and hunting knives as they stared at Wei Hua and his group. Soon, more than ten wild boars ran out of the forest. They were all over two meters tall, and their teeth were sharp and long. On each boar's back sat a monkey knight wearing rattan armor and holding a lance. Xiao Bin was a little surprised. What's going on with these monkeys? who taught them to ride wild boars and use weapons. Wei Hu was speechless. It was probably me. The monkeys surrounded them. A few night monkeys and some rare ranked creatures were watching Wei Hu and the others, especially the tree man. The tree man said, Epic ranked monkeys, what are you stopping us for? At that moment, a monkey knight led a wild boar to the side and made way for them. An extremely old monkey walked out of the group of monkeys. It looked very short, as it had a hunched back and a long beard. Its beard and eyebrows were all white. It was not holding any weapons. It only had a crutch, a gourd at its waist, 
and a straw hat on its back. Wei Hua read its description on the information feed. Monkey King, epic ranked, male, 356 years old. It walked over slowly. What are these two epic ranked people doing here? Wei Hua said calmly. We're just passing by. Are you trying to make us your enemy? The old monkey observed Wei Hua closely. It could not see through him, but its intuition told it that Wei Hua was very strong and could not be provoked. Therefore, it said, Visitors have come from afar. How could the Monkey Mountain not host a banquet? I would like to ask the two of you to show me your true selves. If you tell me all your experiences, I will be even more grateful. The old monkey used the imposing field as it spoke. The imposing field did not exert much pressure, but it carried information. Wei Hua and the tree man could withstand the imposing field. Although Xiao Bin could not understand what the old monkey was saying, he could feel the old monkey's kindness. Xiao Bin and the tree man stopped talking. Wei Hua thought about it for a moment, as he was the one in charge of the caravan. He said, All right, we'll be disturbing you then. Meanwhile, Wei Hua thought to himself, Why do these monkeys sound so traditional? The monkeys put away their weapons. The old monkey smiled and turned around to lead the way. It took a step and crossed over ten meters. Wei Hua put the rhinoceros and Wei Sha into the divine pet space and grabbed Xiao Bin's shoulder before following the monkey. Xiao Bin felt a strong gust of wind hit his face as he retreated rapidly. The old monkey led the way while Wei Hua and the tree man followed closely. A monkey archer jumped between the branches while a monkey knight followed them on his boar. Soon, they arrived in front of a stockade. A stone tablet had been erected at the entrance of the stockade, and three words were written on it. Wei Hua and the others did not recognize the three words. They must have been written by the monkeys. The old monkey stopped in its tracks and let out a few coughs. The female monkeys and the other monkeys in the village ran out. They were all wearing clothes made of beast fur, shoes, and hats and holding hoes, spatulas, firewood knives, and bamboo cages. If one did not take a closer look, one would think that they were short and skinny people who were underdeveloped. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 139, Training to Make Way The old monkey led a group of people into the village. The monkeys who had returned from outside walked to their wives and children's side. Upon seeing this scene, Xiao Bin was amazed. As they walked, they saw a huge statue. It was a carved giant bear with the head of a monkey. Wei Hu was curious. What is this? The old monkey bowed deeply before the statue and said, This is the saint who gave us the monkey civilization. Legend has it that he has the head of a monkey and the body of a bear. He taught us how to hunt, grow, and manufacture. Most importantly, he enlightened us and gave us intelligence. In other words, without this saint, there would not have been a monkey civilization. Wei Hua looked at the gigantic statue silently and felt emotional. Five hundred years had passed just like that. Even if something had been left behind, it would already be beyond recognition. The old monkey slammed his crutch against the ground and the ground shook. Soon, a group of monkeys ran over with plates of fruit. This is our main course. The peach is very sweet. Please try it. The old monkey pointed at a peach that was about the size of a lychee. Wei Hu grabbed one and threw it into his mouth. As he bit it, the juice splattered in his mouth. The juice was sweet and delicious, and there was sufficient water. After he swallowed the fruit, a cool aura surrounded his body, making him feel comfortable. It would be better if he could eat this in the summer. The tree man picked up a plate and poured all the fruit into his mouth. He was so huge that this plate of peaches would not be enough for him. Xiaobin tasted one too. He was left speechless. The monkeys had brought seven to eight types of fruit. Each of them tasted very good and contained extremely powerful energy. They could be considered natural treasures. Wei Hua thought about it. Are you going to trade the seeds of these fruits? I can trade with you. The old monkey laughed out loud. There are all sorts of wild things on the mountain. It doesn't matter if I give you some. It's just that I'm curious about your experiences along the way. I originally planned to travel around the world to witness all sorts of miracles, 
but I can't leave the other monkeys unless they give birth to a second epic-ranked creature. I'm very curious about this world. During the conversation, the tree man was the first to tell his story. He used the imposing field to emit information. As long as one was at the epic stage, one could understand this information. Xiao Bin had no imposing field, so he did not know what the three of them were talking about. Wei Hua tried to use this method to concentrate enough information and transmit it out of the imposing field. It was a new communication method that was more efficient than words. Which epic ranked creature did not live for hundreds of years? If a story was described in words, how long would it take for it to travel? Transmitting information through the imposing field was much faster. It was just like compressing information on a computer and sending it through the internet. The speed depended on the proficiency and strength of the epic-ranked expert at using the imposing field. The process could be completed in three minutes by using the imposing field to transmit information for three days and three nights without saying anything. Not only could they transmit words, but also images, videos, scents, and senses. Wei Hua, the tree man, and the old monkey were communicating through the imposing field. Xiaobin did not know what they were talking about and did not dare interrupt them. He just ate quietly and soon finished the whole plate of peaches. At that moment, a monkey walked over with a plate. This time, there were bird eggs the size of marbles on the plate. They were bird eggs nonetheless. The old monkey said, These are the eggs of the goo goo birds we raised. Have a taste. This is a delicacy that none of you could taste otherwise. The three of them did not move, mainly because they did not know how to eat the eggs. The tree man was too big mouthed and could not taste anything. Xiao Bin, on the other hand, was not used to raw food. The old monkey demonstrated before the three of them. It picked up one egg and threw it into its mouth to chew it. It ate the egg directly. Wei Ho was curious. You raised the birds and made them lay eggs. What else is different about you other than your appearance? The old monkey nodded. That's right. A few hundred years ago, a group of Gugu birds came to Monkey Mountain. I was not an epic rank being at the time. We planned to kill them all and steal all their eggs. However, a monkey appeared among us. It said that not only could we not kill them, but we instead had to protect them. Every time we eat eggs, we have to leave one. Xiao Bin was shocked. He finally understood. Was this how the monkeys had been born? At that moment, a group of monkeys came to the square with bronze drums. The bronze drums were about the same size as an old godmother, one, glass jar. They were made of bronze and they were covered in pig skin. When one used a wooden stick, they would sound like drums when they were used. Even Wei Hua and the tree man were shocked. The tree man asked in shock, Is this a legendary musical instrument? A few monkeys ran away from the group. Accompanied by the drums, they started flipping and jumping. It seemed like they could not keep up with the rhythm, but there were rules they had to follow. How terrifying! Xiao Bin frowned deeply. Interesting. The tree man was very happy. That's right, Wei Hua said calmly. After the three of them finished their conversation, Wei Hua said that he wanted to visit the mountain village. The old monkey welcomed him eagerly. The tree man walked to the gate of the mountain. He was not interested in looking around. He was thinking about musical instruments, songs, and dancing alone. Wei Hua and Xiao Bin started looking around the mountain village. Xiao Bin said softly, These monkeys are really scary. They are almost no different from humans. If they were given a few hundred years, would they run around in spaceships? Fortunately, they are all friendly. Friendly? Wei Hua stopped in his tracks and said, If it were not for me and the tree man, you would have met the monkeys alone. What do you think would have happened then? Xiao Bin was stunned. Wei Hua said, Let me ask you another question. If you were an epic-ranked expert and the old monkey king of the monkey group died, what would you do? Xiao Bin suddenly fell silent. Wei Hua said, Why did the old monkey say that he cannot leave the monkey group until a second epic-ranked monkey is born? That's because if it leaves, the monkey group will be exterminated today. Xiaobin thought about it for a long time before saying, I understand. There is no good or evil in this world. There are only weak and strong creatures. All the living creatures and humans we have encountered have been very kind to us. 
That is because you are strong enough, Big Brother Wei. He had trained his body to become stronger so that others would reason with him calmly. 1. Old Godmother is a brand of chili sauce made in China. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to 5 Frozen Centuries novel. Chapter 140. Leaving. After observing the monkeys for a while, Wei Hu bade the monkey king farewell. The monkey king did not hold them back. It could not wait for the two epic ranked creatures to leave. Wei Hu had made a lot of trades with the monkeys. Apart from the peaches, there was also a book called the Wonder Herb Book. It was a medical book similar to the herb garden. The words in it were written in the language of the monkeys, but there were many valuable herbs recorded inside. It was very valuable. The tree men obtained monkey dance by trading. It was a book that recorded the dances of the monkeys. It was very interesting. The three of them left the monkey mountain. They walked 40 to 50 kilometers before exiting the monkey mountain for good. Are you not singing anymore? Wei Hu asked. The tree man said, I stopped singing. Singing will expose our location. That would be too dangerous. I was too proud of myself previously. There are many powerful beings in this world. One has to be humble. Wei Hu said, I think you're injured. What happened before? The tree man hesitated for a long time before saying, Have you heard of the Tyrannosaurus King? The half-legendary Tyrannosaurus King is the one who injured me. Half-legendary? Wei Hu was a little surprised. It turned out that the tree man had encountered an existence at the half-legendary level. It was no wonder that he maintained his cautious appearance. Wei Hu asked, How long ago was that? The tree man replied, About 70 to 80 years ago. Wei Hu was speechless. Was 70 to 80 years not a long time ago? The group continued its journey. Soon, the sky turned dark and the three of them stopped to rest at night. However, at that moment, a faint white glow was emitted not far away. The tree man had already buried his lower body in the soil and started resting. Wei Hu called out to Xiao Bin. Come with me! Wei Hu led Xiao Bin to the glowing place. It was a small mountain with a cave entrance about three meters in diameter. The light was coming from the cave entrance. When the two of them approached, sounds of running water could be heard coming from the cave. Wei Hu checked it and mumbled. This place looks familiar. Get down! Wei Hu suddenly told Xiao Bin. Xiao Bin was confused. Did I hear wrong? Get down? Wei Hu used his inner qi energy and pushed Xiao Bin's body. Xiao Bin's heart skipped a beat. However, after he landed in the cave, Xiao Bin realized that a layer of Xi energy had turned into a shield to protect him. He kept falling until he finally saw a few small holes in the water. He lifted his head and saw the starry sky while Wei Hu was jumping down. Splash! Xiao Bin fell into the water and countless streams hit him, crashing into the surrounding walls. Wei Hu stomped down and pushed him into a cave under the water. Then, the underground stream carried the two of them forward. The underground tunnel was very complex. Moments later, they rushed into a mountain. There was a small peninsula in the middle of the mountain. Wei Hua thought of the time when he had obtained the qi cultivation skill. He looked at the confused Xiao Bin and sighed in his heart. He was like an old man who had met the main character. He did not understand why those old men would take care of the main characters in novels. Why would an old man not only teach the protagonist cultivation techniques, but also leave all sorts of good things for the main character? At that moment, Wei Hu understood that this was probably the elder's advice to the younger generation. It was probably an instinct. It was just like the way most people who committed heinous crimes would not hurt children. An old man who had many years of achievements would spare no effort to take the protagonist in as a disciple and train him when he saw someone with potential. Wei Hua floated on the island. There was a jade gate on the island, but it was no longer open to him. Wei Hua looked at Xiao Bin. What did you see? What did you hear? Xiao Bin was stunned. At first, he had not understood why Wei Hua had wanted to push him down there. However, gradually, he had understood. Big Brother Wei, is this the cultivation technique you got? The walls are filled with cultivation techniques. Wei Hu was confused. He put on his black helmet and used the God View, 
only to see words appear on the wall. There were cultivation techniques on the wall. Wei Hui took a closer look. There were two cultivation techniques on the wall. One of them was called Qi Manufacturing Technique, while the other was called Jade Liquid Cultivation Technique. Wei Hui studied them carefully and soon understood the cultivation methods of these two skills. The Qi Manufacturing Technique was divided into five steps. It was a Qi Cultivation Method, while the Jade Liquid Cultivation Technique was a Body Tempering Method. Wei Hua thought about it. Wasn't this his basic Qi Cultivation skill? Wei Hua studied and memorized all the skills. If he had obtained a skill book, the skill would have disappeared. However, if he used this method to obtain Qi Cultivation skills, he could continue cultivating and maybe even improve. However, at that moment, Xiao Bin suddenly said, I've heard of the Qi Manufacturing Technique. Wei Hua was confused. You have heard of it? Where did you hear about it? Xiao Bin said, This cultivation technique existed in our world as well. I've heard of it, but I've never practiced it before. I heard that it was a cultivation technique created by a Qi master. However, that master passed away. Did he not pass away? Did he instead transmigrate to this world? Wei Hua was speechless. He understood now. Had these so-called Qi cultivation skills evolved before the time halt? These skills must have been improved. Otherwise, there would not have been such an outstanding effect. Xiao Bin looked at the cultivation techniques excitedly. Soon, he entered a trance-like state and completely forgot about his surroundings. He only stopped when he bumped into the Jade Gate. Xiao Bin was stunned. He turned around and told Wei Hua apologetically. Big Brother Wei, no! Master, I want to stay here and focus on my cultivation. This is a rare opportunity. If I miss it, I might regret it for my entire life. Hidden quest, Xiao Bin will temporarily leave the traveling caravan and return after reaching the epic stage. If he returns successfully, the player will obtain an unknown legendary level reward. Legendary? At present, Wei Hua only had one legendary item. It was the legendary card of the God Destroyer. The card was very useful. It could transform into any living creature. It was also very powerful and it had a domain force. After thinking about it for a long time, Wei Hua gave the durian seed and peach seed to Xiao Bin. This is a cultivation treasure ground. It's very safe. You can stay here and cultivate. If fate allows it, we will meet again. Xiao Bin knelt on the ground and cowed out three times before Wei Hua. You will be my teacher for life. If I succeed in my cultivation, I will definitely return to your side to repay your kindness. System Notice Xiao Bin left your traveling caravan temporarily. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.